A carjacking in the Hutt Valley. How far away are you? About 30 seconds. With a young victim who makes a stand. And I said, no, get out. And then um, he said, why don't you get out? Oscar foils a cannabis plot at the prison. There we go, Tunis. Yeah. And Doc Tracker Dog Fern hunts down some young Kiwis gone bush. Yeah, find a Kiwi. Late afternoon in Wellington sees Delta team Paul and Fallon called out to a job that could turn nasty. Yeah, it's well for you copy that update, it's just been seen again. An informant has reported that a man has carjacked a vehicle, ejecting an 11-year-old passenger and taken off. The informant states, the male was driving dangerously, stopped, made the informant around, trying to get to his car. You just go to the location of the vehicle for Delta 4, please. You all wait, or where the dog training is on that one right there. How stupid is that? He dumped the car next to the dog, base. If the stolen car is that close to the police training centre in Trentham, then some trainee dogs would get to watch Fallon in action. Probably seen the car, the car just ran. Timing is crucial. While the car might be safe, the offender on the loose is a high risk if he attempts the same tactic on another car. A description of him is released. He's male, 90 to 20 years, short hair with a rat's tail. How far away are you? About 30 seconds. Probably there's a guy that just jumped out of the golf course over the fence. Roger. Right you guys are good? That guy? The carjacker puts on a dance for Paul and Fallon, who wastes no time in containing him. Let's get on the ground, mate. Get on the ground. At Mount Eden Corrections Facility in central Auckland, Circo dog handler Bill is prepping his drug dog Oscar for business. The first few cars get the all clear from Oscar. Wait. Yeah, folks, just put the dog past you all. And likewise, so do the visitors themselves. Yeah, that's fine, folks. Thank you. While Oscar was hoping to find an avalanche of misdemeanours, no news is good news for corrections, Circo, and the prisoners. But everything changes when Oscar leaps into this car. Good boy, good boy. Seeing where to look? Yeah. Oh, he got, he got a noted down by the glove box and he's worked his way up onto the front, yeah, so... No. There we go, Tinnies. Ma'am, out of this car, please. Yeah, you explain what's there, please. Ma'am, your vehicle? No, it's not. It's not? So what explanation can you give for that? Nothing? Picked up the oat and a lovely find. Looks like a few tinnies, so no, I'm wrapped with that. And so is Oscar. He's found a secret stash of four tinnies, each crammed with There's There'll be a consequence to that. The visitor will become a band visitor. We'll contact the police to see if they're interested in this, and uh, yeah, it's a good outcome. While Bill makes a call to the police... Yeah, well, she said she didn't know it was there, and that's, everyone says that. The woman is informed what will happen next. Um, so what I've got to do is, uh, right now you've been arrested for the possession of cannabis, OK? No visit today for this lady. And after Bill's phone call, that's almost the least of her worries. The lady is of interest to the police. The police arrive and ask a few questions. Whose car is it? It's a cousin's car. It's off to the station for this woman for further questioning. She was banned from all New Zealand prison sites for six months. Drug dog Oscar was given the best dog prize by Bill. As you can see, he's still enjoying <laughs> enjoying the day and uh, wants, wants to carry on playing. Okay. Back in Upper Hutt, Delta Team Paul and Fallon are homing in like crime-seeking missiles on an offender who's kicked a boy out of a car and stolen it. There, guy. Fallon may have hoped for a good long run today, but the carjacker has hit the ground quicker than a plane landing at Wellington ground, Airport in a gale. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Good boy. Just pop over on your tummy for me. OK, you're under arrest for sitting in that car, OK? Cops out of put him in custody. Could that unit holding the car come to my location, please? The first backup on the scene is a plain clothes detective, but Fallon isn't taking his eye off the carjacker. With the carjacker out of action and nowhere to go, Fallon takes a break and retires to the dog van. 
Yeah, as you can see, um, he uh, gave himself straight up when he saw the dog, which is good. Bit of a silly mistake coming to the dog section training centre, mate. Yeah. You're training? Training for what? How to get away from police dogs. It's the end of this guy's mischief. In handcuffs, he won't be doing any more carjacking. Oh, good result there. The lady's going to get her car back in one piece. Down the road, Paul meets the car's owner who's got her car back. Her very brave grandson who was in the car is none the worse for wear. No, your bat's still over you, Jack. And oh, you want a new bat. I doubt he would have taken anything. This young man was simply sitting in the car waiting to go to cricket when the car was rudely taken. Can I take, Can your I car take for this drive? for a ride? And I just said to him, no, and then he said to me, um... You said wait. no, get and out. And I said no, get out, and then um, he said, why don't you get out? So I ran out to the and started screaming out. It's a good work for being brave, buddy. And please, please Mum's car's all right, eh? Nana, sorry. <laughs> there you go. I'll be in the good books. <laughs> the offender was charged with unlawfully taking a motor vehicle and driving dangerously. He pled guilty in court and was given five months home detention. Do you want to meet Fallon? Um, yep. He, uh, he, he didn't want to take him on, which is lucky. He likes playing cricket as well. <laughs> Hours after their shift began, Wellington Delta team Paul and Fallon have been called to a break-in of an elderly couple's home. So they've been asleep and been woken up, so they're in a bit of distress. The team need to get there ASAP. <laughs> Comms keep the line of communication open. Another dog team are also making their way to the location. Myself and Fallon uh, and Mark and Moose uh, are about three or four minutes away. Upon arrival, Paul quietly enters for a chat with the frightened couple, while dog team number two, Mark and Moose, block their escape routes. Has he been inside? He came in through the garage. Stay upstairs so I know where you are. Mark and Moose enter in search of the intruder. And you're not in the police, good dog. Shut it up. Back at Mount Eden Corrections Facility, things have quietened down for Circo dog team Bill and Oscar. That's until Oscar alerts Bill to something in this blue car. Good boy. Shut good boy. So we'll have a look in here. Bill takes a closer look and locates the source of the indication. Look at that. Straight up, bang on. Right where he indicated. Fantastic find for Oscar. Quite a little bit of So, I'll just call him over. The driver is confronted with Oscar's discovery. What's that? Oh, no. But this is not my car. OK, well, it's, you've got to take it. Ownership for what's in your vehicle. This means repercussions for the visitor and his passengers. The entire car load gets a day's exclusion. The driver was banned from visiting all New Zealand prison sites for three months. Oscar has proved his worth yet again. A good boy, hey. At the famous Wairaki golf course just north of Taupo, a special operation is underway courtesy of dock staff, and it doesn't involve the golfer on the course. Department of Conservation team Malcolm and his German short-haired pointer Fern are going to try and track some young Kiwis living in the golf course's own bush sanctuary. Also on site is their colleague Alison. Come on, Fernie. I'm gonna go and catch a Kiwi. Before work can begin, Fern is required to don some crucial pieces of equipment. So she has to wear a muzzle when she's work doing this sort of work. She also wears the hivers. Coat. Once she knows, once that she's got her coat on and got her muzzle on, that okay, this is a we're at work today. The golf carts will get a good workout today as the team head out to the rough. The native bush sanctuary is a young Kiwi's kindergarten, where they can grow big enough before being released into the wild. So this will just give an indication where the bird is, hopefully. Each Kiwi has a transmitter so the team can get a ballpark idea of where they are. Yep, we got it. Got it? Yep. Oh, cool. Right, let's go. Right. Fern is the key to finding out their exact whereabouts. Here, find a kiwi. 
It's 3 a.m. and while Wellington sleeps, Delta dog teams Paul and Fallon and Mark and Moose are searching for the whereabouts of an intruder. They think he's somewhere in this elderly couple's home. Shut up. Moose takes only moments to sniff out the intruder. Like Goldilocks, he's fallen asleep on the couch. No. What are you doing? Oi. What are you doing? Whoa. What are you doing? You Whose house is this? Oh, this is the party house. My you're, in, you're in someone's house, mate. Yeah, this is the house Wait. everyone's been at. I'm trying to find my friend. No, mate, you've broken into someone's house. I haven't broken into anyone's house. Turn around. You've given these fright, um, people a Friday. you got uh, people upstairs asleep and they're so concerned because you've broken into their house. I haven't broken into anyone's house. Well, how did you get in? The garage door was open. I'm trying to find my friend. Oh, well, that's breaking into my definition, mate. Paul escorts the man in his dirty sock from the house. We were having, there was a party here. And I don't know where they've gone. Yeah, you can have your sock back, mate. Comp started, you probably got one in custody. He's been on more than couches tonight. In spite of his confusion, the elderly couple are pretty sure they haven't been hosting a raucous student party. But you enter yeah. their house and they're asleep. They think you're in there to steal stuff. Oh, you know, I haven't broken into anyone's house. I haven't tried to steal anything. I'm just trying to find oh. my friends and get home. The young man has an uber large sense of entitlement. He wants the police to play taxi. Uh, we will take you somewhere. Uh, I won't be home though, it'll probably be the police station. He has little option but to do as he's told with Moose breathing down his back. He can't believe what the police are telling him about what he's done. The people who own the house have seen you come through the garage door and go inside. They just told me that. Okay. Yeah, I could not open that door. You haven't been able to open it, that's why it's half yeah. open and it's jammed, but you've damaged it, that's what I'm telling you, okay? With backup on the scene to remove the unwanted lodger, who appears to think this is some sort of Airbnb, Paul consoles the elderly occupant. And he was in standing on this doormat as I came downstairs. Right. And that's when I confronted him and oh, said yeah. to him, you, you, what are you doing? Yeah. And the guy said, I'm just looking for somewhere to put my head down. We know he's intoxicated, it's probably not a big intent there, but um, you know, we, we clearly want him through the courts to fix the garage door and, and make, make it right with these people, so um, we'll make sure that happens. The couple declined to lay charges against their late night larrikin after he apologised sincerely and repaired their garage door. Luckily for him, some people have a sense of community and forgiveness. Unfortunately, this wasn't much of a job for the dogs. Fallon remains hopeful that the next one will involve a track. Back at Wairaki Golf Course, dog tracker dog Fern is in the ferns herself, sniffing through the club's bush sanctuary for Kiwi chicks needing a health checkup. Thank you. Dock ranger Allison gets a signal on her transmitter that they're right on top of one of these iconic birds. We're getting, we're getting really close to the bird now. Fern backs up on the finding with her own onboard organic sensing system and tells Malcolm. I know, I think it's right here. Malcolm's torch provides the light to peep into this little Kiwi's daytime daycare. Oh, here it is. Right off. Fern is clearly delighted with her find. Good girl, Fern. <laughs> found a kiwi. What a clever girl. Doesn't get much better than that. Fern knows her next job is to stand aside and watch this young kiwi who Doc have named Whakapapa undergo health checks. His transmitter's attached to his leg here. So every month we come in here and we change the strap on the transmitter to the other leg. And just give him a, a way, a bit of a health check, make sure he's okay. So. While Alison attends to the young Kiwi, Malcolm attends to Fern. Definitely got to keep them hydrated, so we carry water and just carry this little, this little camping bucket thing, and it's perfect. This is one young Kiwi everyone hopes will put on weight quickly. He is 980. Whoa! Brilliant! So, so yeah. once he gets to 1,000, um, He's getting to the point where we can release him, so he's not far off it. Looks like the sanctuary will be home to little fucker papa a little longer before he's released into the wild. By putting him in a place like this and getting this little guy here up to 1,000 grams, he's got a good chance of surviving in the wild then. Malcolm's handled kiwis hundreds of times, but these ancient birds still hold a fond fascination. It doesn't matter how often you handle these birds, they just blow you away. They're amazing. 
Yeah, so. Goodbye, fucker papa. Goodbye, little fucker papa. Fern watches on as her feathery friend retreats to his burrow. There you go. This one done. She can hardly wait to sniff out the next one. At Auckland's International Mail Centre, Ministry for Primary Industries Detector Team Law and Cleo are checking the recently arrived mail for items that might pose a biosecurity risk. Over here, sit on the belt. Early January always brings an avalanche of Christmas presents posted too late, so the team will be busy today. Good girl, run this way. As Cleo checks her way through a consignment of mail from Europe, this box catches her attention. All right, so we got an indication of Cleo. Cleo locks on and gets her reward. That's a final response, so that means that there is a risk, possible risk item in this box. And she's very keen on it. Uh, the origin of the box is France. Law takes the package off for checks, and straight away she discovers the offending material. There we go, that's what she's after. Um, that's actually fresh sausages. It's uh, pork meat. It's not going to be able to come through. Fluent in French, Law can immediately translate what this sausage meat consists of. Pork meat could carry swine flu, for example. And we've got a couple of them in there. Now, what's interesting is that the parso doesn't actually declare the sausages per se. Um, it gives it its... Um, the name of the town where it comes from, but it doesn't say that it's actually meat. So unless you speak French and know every city in France, you would actually not know that this was meat. So it's not really a clear declaration of what was inside that parcel. So thanks to the dog, we got it. There's meat, there's cheese. This package is like a cardboard pie. That cheese is actually perfectly fine to enter. Um, at the moment, our standards are quite flexible when it comes to cheese. People can bring up to two kgs into New Zealand. Yummy French cheese. And that's all we have. The cheese can be delivered to the recipient of the parcel, but not the sausage. What's going to happen is that the person who's supposed to receive the sausages will get a letter in the parcel that still has the cheese and the other item that are allowed to come through. The person will be given the choice to either reship or destroy the sausages and uh, they have 30 days to tell us what they, what they want us to do. The importer chose to have the sausage destroyed. MPI Beagle Cleo shown she is one clever little sausage herself. Good girl. Back at the Wairaki Golf Course Kiwi Sanctuary, Doc Tracker Dog Fern is helping staff find young Kiwi so they can be weighed and given health checks before release. Fernie. Look. Got another kiwi. Fern's already located one healthy kiwi called Fucker Papa and is now leading Malcolm to a second burrow. Can you see it? Right there. Can you? Unlike his mate, this kiwi isn't keen to leave his cosy little nest. There it is. Got it. Well done. Yay! <laughs> good catch. Oh, good girl, Fern. Yay! Got it. Hard to see. She doesn't tell lies, eh? If she says it's there, it's there. The team are familiar with this bird. His name is Retallic, after all black Brody Retallic, and he needs a new transmitter. Changing the transmitter from one leg to the other and putting a whole new one on. Fern watches on as Retallic undergoes his health and weight checks. Seven, 55. Okay, he has lost some weight. Why has he not putting on weight? Mm, sure. He's lost a bit of weight from last time, but not enough to be worried about. This young fellow needs to be over a kilo before he can be released into the wild, so the Wairaki Sanctuary will be his home for a bit longer. He feels feisty, though. He does. Yeah, he's, maybe. Got, he's got lots of energy. Oh, Kiwis are naturals at finding worms, berries and seeds. The team are confident his weight will increase. Eat whatever you like. It's been a productive morning for fern and kiwis, large and small. Well done. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> Good day's work. With today's job complete, Fern gets a bit of playtime, making the most of what Wairaki has to offer. OK, Fern, let's go and play golf. But instead of a round of golf, Fern prefers to cool off in the river. It's been a long night for Paul and Fallon. As they head back to base, they spot a dodgy-looking guy with a dodgy bike with a dodgy tyre. 
You want, Bray? Hey, I'll give you some money, hey? 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 Yeah, we'll be soon. Just drop your bike for a minute. Is it your bike? Yeah, of course it is. My son's uh, Lucy's bike. Yeah, I'll just see if I can bring your details up. While Paul runs some checks, the man runs a bit of street theatre past an audience of one very bored Delta dog. The old dog's got a dock to the east to the north side of the US. Paul reveals good news to the rapper's delight. Well, you look to be all squeaky clean at the moment, which is great. Good? Yep, that's good, bro. Do you know what? I think you should go home and practice your lyrics, bro. Yeah, okay. Dog's on in the hills, <laughs>